Kawaii Oregon. Kawaii, that's me. Is there another Kawaii person in there? There is, Jillian. Jillian, hello, Jillian. Aloha. 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 You look great. <laughs> oh my goodness, this is so fun to have Sandra on video with all of us. <laughs> hey, I'm gonna ask everyone, if you don't mind, if you can mute yourselves, that would be wonderful. And as we open up to Q&A a little bit later, you can raise your hands and, or you can type your question into the chat box. Chat box. So we'll go through as much of that. And April will help mute some of y'all also if you don't know how to do it. Um, That's great. But again, we'll go through some of this and make sure that Sandra isn't the one that I mute by accent because we definitely want to hear <laughs> what's coming in. And y'all, this is the timing, Sandra, of you coming on. It's just, it feels so good to me. Um, I, I, I don't want to sound repetitive, but I'll, I'll, for the sake of just of the call, these waves that we've been riding and the emotions that have been coming in, the energies that are inviting us into an expansion, <laughs> the emotions that are taking us into discovering places within ourselves that haven't been touched in the way that they're asking to be touched now. And how we stand up for our sovereignty, for our humanity, from within ourselves first. And also what was predicted as to what was coming in and how we're rolling with that tide now and where it's taken us to. It's all that and so much more that's gonna be covered on today's call. And it's just, again, a gift and an honor to Sandra have you on the call today. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, you're so welcome, John. It is such such an honor to connect with you all the time and everyone too. And especially, you know, I was kind of, I was thinking about, we connected four years ago on a very potent night, let's say. Um, it was election night. And I was just kind of contemplating like the timing of you and I getting together and having like a powerful conversation, talking about the higher things that are unfolding. I was just like, wow, yeah, here it is, you know, four years later with John and everything that's going on. And, and, uh, and we, were, we were speaking earlier on the phone, just kind of reviewing, okay. So we, we were a little forewarned that this year was gonna be this amplification of the dismantling because the higher realms, the higher light, all the light workers and the way showers and everybody who was embodying was going to change everything because the amount of light that we were able to anchor through the collective grid systems and the human hearts and everything was going to change everything. And it was going to amplify the dismantling effects, systems, realities, patterns, magnetics, emotional structures, everything. And to have such a palpable physicalization of, uh, of that dismantling is, uh, it's quite extraordinary, you know? So, so a lot of us are just in observer mode, not disconnected from what's going on, but going, interesting, interesting how this is really just so in your face and the external. So the physicalization of new earth realms was, was on the charts for this year. And the revelation and the freedom codes and the resurrection codes and all this embodiment and everything, especially in the first half of the year, and it was like we just came out of the gate at the beginning and just, boom, you know, everything is just so amplified and so accelerated. But the beautiful thing about what's happening now is these, these quantum effects, you know, there's these, all these different layers of things happening simultaneously. And because of the embodiment phase where we get to feel our multidimensional aspects simultaneously in a much more palpable way, again, physicalization of what's happening upstairs. It's really quite beautiful and brilliant what is unfolding right now, not just with the external dismantling, but with the heightened energies that a lot of the embodiers are going through right now and the, the ability to handle, to integrate so many different realms and aspects of self at the same time that we feel this really strong creator state of consciousness coming back. And that is this 
pure state, pure connect, reconnection to source, not just as a reconnection, but as a, a consistent awareness of um, uh, right within our beingness. Like I have never felt source or my higher levels or the the physicalization of um, of the pure, pure Christed state of consciousness or zero point has been so easy to get to. This has been co consistent for me. And like, I have not experienced it to this level before so much so that you spend many hours in the light realms each day and each night. And, and there's been um, just the, the ability to, again, you know, activate those crystalline structures, taking on so much more light and so much more of these, uh, this higher consciousness. And of course, because of the current circumstances, uh, we have a lot of people praying for help and calling on it, which gives us permission to take on more of that that's coming from Gaia herself and and from the from the um, the new the brand new star organic stargate system that's been activated. Does that make sense? Oh, it makes a lot of sense, and and it's so much that you packed into those five minutes, um, because there is a lot of shifts, and I've been feeling also. I find myself. I went through a long period at the beginning of the sequestering um, where I had the energy and the drive and the passion to do, to do the shows, to do certain things that were very specific to how I'm showing up as a way shower, if you will. Um, and then after that, I found myself, I'd have to throw myself on the couch and it wasn't to sleep. It was to get into this alpha state of energy and it would run through me so beautifully. And that's wonderful. But then I also found myself in different periods of an amplified agitation, like what wasn't resonant with that alpha state would have to come up to be felt, to be experienced, um, embodied and transmuted somehow. And it can be confusing because it's, we can't get into a knowing of how to control it to try to, uh, to try to get it to evolve. It feels like an organic process somehow. What's your awareness around that? My awareness of that is, uh, is the awareness of being like a crystal, like truly an amplifier of anything. And then we choose, you know, because everything's being amplified. So of course there's always a, a bit of collective transmutation, which technically is our own stuff, you know, but it's in, in that moment, like my strongest tool through the, because like you, there's, I don't know, it, it might be worse for me. I, I don't know, the things that I've been going through, I'm just like, wow. I mean, there's been entire days where I could barely maintain waking consciousness me too. for me longer too. than an hour mm -hmm. or so. I'm just like, all right, I'm out, mm -hmm. you know, and, and just needed upstairs. I, I want a, a sleep mask that says needed upstairs and I'm just going to check out. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, lay down. And all of this stuff happens. And then you come back into waking consciousness. You're like, that was my whole day. You know? yeah. <laughs> and it's just, it's like that. But I'm very aware of the crystalline part of, of this activation becoming more crystalline because when I step outside, my, you know, my skin is sparkling and everything like that. Being an amplifier of the higher stuff, but there's also the, the lower stuff kind of wriggles in and tries to open up new pathways in, in the body and tries to open up new meridians. That's why it's rewriting the body as well as the consciousness. Mm -hmm. So I'm aware that, yeah, we're going to need more rest. May, oh my gosh, we're getting ready for like a big, uh, a big activation for the embodiers, I should say. At the, at the beginning of June and we were forewarned about it. So we've been like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, it's the end of April. I, you know, it, it's several hours a day in this quantum unified zero point state playing with the light realms and, and it just, it just takes over, which is quite beautiful. But the other kind of thing that wriggles in every once in a while of like that, you know, how much can I, can, more of this can I take? I always kind of check in with myself how do I feel in this now moment what exactly am I feeling is it mine is it the collective thing because the co collective thing too is so amplified what am I creating in this now moment 
never going into panic or fear that's not on the menu any longer. It's just kind of like, what, what exactly am I experiencing right now? And how or what, what do I need to shift it? How do I shift it in this now moment? Going to highest trajectory, highest self-care, whatever it is, because sometimes it's a matter of the mind wanting, hey, your inbox is cray cray right now. You need to answer all, because oh, there's all this newly awakened, you know, questions and what about this and what about that and all this stuff going on. So there's a, a lot of new people reaching out to way showers, um, very similar to previous waves we've had, only it just seems like it's quite overwhelming. So there's, oh, I would, I would love to answer that, but I am so aligned with honoring myself and my journey because I have chosen. That's the higher thing. If I don't create anything this year, if there's no events, if there's no new classes, whatever. And I'll let, cause I know the highest thing, my highest choice is embodiment, is mm -hmm. to demonstrate, to show uh, others what is possible with ascension, with this frequency and really go into it and go, I know that the realms are getting torn apart right now. I know that the dismantling of the old is, it's kind of on autopilot right now. So you don't have to focus on it at all. All you need to do is amplify, you know, the lower structures can't handle light, right? So you just, and you can feel like your light body and everything changing. So a lot of times it's just that moment of checking in and going, what exactly is going on with me in my creation right. right now? Because that zero point connection that you described, which is just flawless, you know, it's just consistent source, zero point. It's so consistent, really, you know, aligning all those toroidal fields, you know, here we are in the, the center of the center of the center in this beautiful adept state in order to handle uh, and receive what's going on here and getting reconnected ourselves to these organic star stargate systems that opened up in December and January, you just check in in that now moment. What's the revelation? What's the freedom? What's the resurrection that's happening within me right now as an example of what's happening on a higher level? And then simple. I'm not, and I, you have to make that choice. I'm not gonna answer everybody today not today not you know maybe not even this week and some you know some people are still not not experiencing that and i honor that and i honor that people want to deal with the external in the way that they deal with the external it is what it is but it's also it also has has nothing to do with my personal choices moment to moment and sometimes it's the simplest of things. You know, I'll go outside and I'll have an open eye meditation where I just connect with the trees or the flowers or the birds or, or just Gaia in general and just be, just mm -hmm. be with that. And it's, it's, uh, and that's extraordinary because that's, that's the work. That's the work right now. You know, it's just, okay, this is it. I'm just going to let this expand through me. And there's, there's a lot of mastery level patience with everything that's happening too, because a lot of people are stimulated or they don't know what to do with their frustration or when that anxiety or the collective, oh my gosh, how long is this going to last kind of thing um, starts, you know, you can, you can feel it. It's like this weird background energy kind of running in the realities. However, there's, it's quantum. They're all happening at the same time. Resurrection, ascension, everything happening at the same time as this other thing, this other dismantling going on. So as long as you keep your focus on anchoring the higher thing, the faster this goes away, you know, by by quantum effect. So Yeah, and and that's just amazing awareness to bring to all of us because we are going through many of us are experiencing again the different levels of different emotions coming in. And we've become accustomed to feeling those emotions at the first couple of layers, if you will, of superficiality. And there's a depth that again is being extrapolated through all these ascensionary energies and to focus again on the highest. It's like, what's in my highest right now? And to keep calling that forward. Um, it's key. It's, 
it's it's so powerful um and it also takes me into the distractions of other energies that would be shiny enough to take our emotions in a certain direction and how do you suggest that people call themselves back from that feeding frenzy that seems to be ignited in different places uh i i won't say it's not exciting to watch some of those structures come apart however if i can just give some perspective you know this has been decades in the making so it's the you know nothing crazy new is is going to be uh revealed in the next month so <laughs> <laughs> everybody relax but uh, <laughs> i mean you gotta watch it because uh, uh, a lot of the things and, and that was the whole reason why I've, I've grabbed my my questions so i did this post last this article last week i was like you know everyone needs to kind of check in on how they're dealing with this because for some people they just go for the hamster wheel the just kind of like quick you know serotonin hit of, mm -hmm. of yeah. i'm just gonna you know, a little bit more of the same a little bit more of the same a little bit more of the same let me just see what's going on let me check that one more time you know it's just kind of like honey if you just step back and realize that you are wasting your your day or your hour or however long uh you're spending watching that stuff crumble fascinating yeah but oh my gosh set a timer give yourself five minutes and then do the other 24 hours um you know on on what's happening with you and your universe because the whole thing about uh ascension and the higher timelines and everything was about the thing that happens next the thing that happens next and it's simultaneous for for many decades and then all of a sudden you see the this great awakening happening and then all that dismantling will be gone and uh, you don't want to start you know at base level like oh and now how do i ascend you know it's keep you know, keep your focus up there on what's happening with with you and your own personal journey and try not to get too entangled with the narratives and that was that was one of my points about writing up um these questions which we could probably roll right into let's roll into it because they're fantastic and they're again they're just so wonderful to bring us back into self-awareness into yeah. that self-sustaining yeah right right because i asked what's the highest thing you know there's so much so many things happening at once and i'm very involved in what's happening behind the scenes and the brotherhoods and sisterhoods of light and everything and and people are like tell tell me what's going to happen next what's going to happen next i'm like wait a second that's not what yes that's happening and yes there are many of us who are involved with that however the the, the bigger thing is um is is how you're how you're dealing with this in in the now moment and checking in on again what comes next is you fully embracing your creator state of beingness your ability to create realities again without interference oh. so uh so i i put together this this list of questions um and i just want to address a, a couple of them so everyone just just take a breath and feel into your heart and just answer these in uh they're, they're all written up on my on my website but there's um there, there's something to journaling and meditating with these and of course light grounding your answers into this reality so when you kind of address these after the show uh on your own and just kind of mentally go through them or take notes right now um you also want to light ground your answers into this reality so you can take a look at them and kind of ground best case scenario highest trajectory for your own uh, ascension path so very first and foremost what has been my response to lockdown and social distancing and then how do i feel about my response and everyone goes through different levels of of different phases through this so your initial reaction is going to be different from yesterday different from today different from tomorrow so it's good to just kind of check in how am i reacting to this am i behaving like a master am i keeping on on track 
have I just been, you know, just, just completely disconnected? Because that can be um, another thing that happens with people. Too much information. Oh my gosh, there's, you know, this reality, that reality, all these different narratives pre presenting, and they just kind of check out and shut down. So, you know, it's just kind of like, I'm not going to focus on anything. And they just kind of step back. So just feel it. And there's no right or wrong answer. This is you and your truth kind of checking in on your truth right now. So what fears, anxieties, or challenges arose? You know, we're kind of midway through this thing. So let's, let's take a look. How am I dealing with them? You know, initially, a lot of people just zoning out or attempting to numb out or uh, going into light warrior mode because they're so excited about what's happening right now. I don't blame you. But, um, and a lot of people just going into the battles with friends and family and social media and everything like that all over the board, right? Just check, on, check in on you. How, are you. how are you dealing with this? What are your, what are your tools? Or are you just uh, on the attack, trying to defend, trying to shake people awake? stepping away altogether, totally focused on the light and disconnecting from the lower reality altogether. Again, your personal journey. What emotional, mental, physical, and spiritual tools are helping me through this? And that is something that I myself had to reevaluate. Like, what's the highest thing? How does my body feel? What can I do? I can't, you know, obviously the gyms are closed. But I found like I can't get up and just run the way that I used to. Me too. It's all I, shifted for me. Yeah. Shit. I was just like, oh my yeah. gosh. You know, I, I know like we're not on camera a lot, but you know, I care about my health and my fitness and my glow and everything. And I was like, you know what? This is just, it's not going to happen. Like I will actually injure myself if I go out and try to do what I used to do. So I was like, okay, so I'm going to have to shift more yoga, more Pilates, really focusing on um, an awareness that comes with the, the way that I do yoga and not just going through a routine, but stopping, pausing, opening up the meridian. You know, sometimes it flows into dance sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes it flows into toning or light language. And I just, uh, everything's just kind of like turns into this beautiful kind of ceremony when, uh, when I exercise in, uh, normal times that I would exercise. And I find myself doing um, very different patterns throughout the day. So everything is just, again, dismantling, complete free form. But the spiritual tools of meditation has been deeper and more consistent than ever. Um, visualization too, a little reminder, a lot of uh, very creative writing uh, coming through and, and new and different creations but nothing that would be manifested in the physical. It's kind of like, there's like private writing for me because I've been a very public um, writer, you know, writing articles every single week for 20 years. And I was like, there's some things I'm, I just want to explore for me and I'm not sharing with friends or anything. I was, it just makes me feel good, you know? And that's, that's the thing. It's just like, all right, I need to keep my vibration up here. So what are, and the emotional tools as well. You know, when the, if agitation presents or frustration or, or um, your friends or your family are, are, you know, they're having very different reactions to what's going on now. It's like, okay, where's my emotional clearing toolbox right now? Because, you know, a two hour conversation with the folks is like, oh my gosh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> really challenging, you know, you're just like, stop, leave it alone, leave it alone. So then afterward, you know, what are the emotional tools? What do I need? You just a lot of walks and earthing and things like that and little creative things. Um, here's a key one. What personal narratives are challenged or what personal narratives are believed or what personal narratives are amplified or broken apart? And then take a look at, and by personal narratives, I mean your stories about what was true, what isn't true, what's true about ascension, what isn't true for you about what you're feeling. Um, and, and the stories are, are running amok right now in the lower realms. So take a look. Are they my own stories? Am I allowing the external 
to influence how I feel or what I believe as, these, as a lot of things come to light? Uh, are they collective narratives from outside sources? Because I'll tell you, one of the things that's getting broken apart is the ability for collective narratives to be influenced in such a global way. And we're seeing a very prime example of that right now. Like, how did this happen? You know, so everyone's getting a look at, uh, oh my gosh, look at what just happened. This is a huge lesson for 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 everyone on the planet, but also, you know, how how much of the collective narrative is influencing your personal journey? Because this is about sovereignty, and about resurrection of the divine, true human, all that embodiment. So, how do you feel? Again, checking in on how you feel about the collective narratives that are playing out and your personal narrative. You know, because they they do, you know, you can't disconnect completely from the collective if you're going to live in a body on a planet, right? So you take a look and you go, mm, that's, there, there are plenty of realities that involve very high vibrational anchoring of New Earth and the New Earth trajectory. So if you want to align with that, then it's just like, wow, you know, sometimes when people have uh, a lot of time to to think and contemplate, and that's certainly happening on a global level, you start making higher choices or you start rearranging your priorities. Kind of like, you know what? I just haven't done enough. I've done too much. I'm exhausted. I, I, I want a, a different life, a different house, a different, you know, some people sit in their space <laughs> alone for, for a while and they're like, why do I live here? Why am I doing this? I want, I want to change, you know, and, and it's kind of like the, the manifestation of the collective wish. I wish I didn't have to go to work. You know, it's just, you're seeing the physicalization of everyone's etheric stuff right now. And it's, um, and it's beautiful because it allows us to make higher choices, different choices, fine tune what's going on. Here's another good one. We are in a magnetic shift, right? There's a, a, a literal polarity um, shift happening right now that's changing the polarity of our fields that has to do with going light body, going to the, the next level. It's changing the fields of our DNA and it's changing duality itself so the things that you're seeing right now that look heightened is just because they're they're getting dismantled so take a look you know if we want to amplify the new thing the trinitized beingness am i engaging with choosing sides or allowing the collective good guy versus bad guy narratives to penetrate my personal collect my personal creations relationships or service to the ascension just take a look at that there's no right or wrong answer. It's not dualistic. It's just take a look. Am I allowing those narratives? Because trust me, <laughs> they're all going to crumble. So there's a, there's a lot of sleight of hand going on uh, mm -hmm. right now. And there are, there are things that are going to be revealed that people, your jaw will drop. Huh. So it's t taking a look like, am I attaching to collective realities? What is the thing that I want to create that's in the highest interests of all concerned you know and just again just taking a look but realizing that the the things that are happening in your body the reason why you're flat uh, a lot of the time are experiencing this extremely high quality light that's been coming in especially in the last couple of weeks we're in a gateway right now as we speak uh it it's a amplification that we've never felt before and it's changing the magnetics of Gaia. It's changing the magnetics of our bodies so that this dualistic electromagnetic function literally is getting shut down. So a lot of times your body is just going, I don't understand what's happening. So it's kind of like almost a safety mechanism to get you just to lay down and allow the body to completely recalibrate, completely recalibrate, completely recalibrate. Because it's going very quickly right now. Okay, am I, am I changing? This year is about heightened change. Am I changing? Are the things that I, I want to change are, are going to really come up for, again, everything becoming amplified. Your own consciousness, your own thoughts, deeds, actions, emotions, feelings 
are getting amplified. Everything gets amplified. Good, bad, everything, right? In order for us all to take a collective look at everything that's been created so that revelation um, unfolds. So in this now moment, am I changing? Where is there resistance? Am I creating? Or am I looping with anxiety, behavior that may not be complementary, um, things that feel like uh, a salve rather than a solution, um, any repetitive behavior, like really, do you really need to do that again today <laughs> kind of thing? And I was just like, all right, uh, in, in order to feel safe, because a lot of people when they feel extremely unsafe, and this is a collective too, and you can assist people with this too, like, hey, maybe we need to mix it up a little bit because this kind of looping thing, you, you're just, you know, you're, you're attempting to shield yourself from change. So any unhealthy or uncomplimentary behavior that needs to shift because we're going into a highly unknown territory. It's a consciousness shifting, dimensional shifting energy that is coming onto the planet right now. And uh, it's, it, it's something that if we can just take a moment and check in and not just a mental exercise, but really kind of dig into the emotional feeling state part of it and go, I, I just, you know, maybe you haven't allowed yourself to feel it or you're crying for no reason, but you really won't take a look at the layers underneath that. John, you brought that up earlier um, that, yeah, it's an opportunity for all of us to go deeper because on the surface, you look at the lessons and how do I feel? And then there's the, the repair work and everything. This is a whole different thing. Complete transmutation of the old self. And we've all felt, you know, John and I had this conversation a couple of years ago about loss of identity. Um, and you can go back and revisit, um, you know, some of the wonderful shows that, that John has had on that. But it's, uh, it's really taking a look. What has been my response to this situation? You know, am I, am I numbing out or am I moving forward? Well, Sandra, and something I want to share in that also, which is, which came as a surprise to me, um, surprise, but not a surprise. But as I, as I got deeper into the emotions of, of, again, this great unknown that's really happening. And from the beginning of the year, it's, I can typically foresee what the theme is going to be. I think I got nothing. It's like, you're not supposed to know. And I was actually sitting in it today. And what came up was this fear, but this tremendous fear of not knowing what's to happen. It's almost, mm -hmm. it can be, if we equate it to things of the past, it's abysmal or nightmarish because it's like stepping into this big black void. And so part of the, my subconscious came up consciously and I felt that fear in my body of okay. how unsafe it can be, how I might need to rely on others, how others might need to rely on me, how I can't trust that all these things like started to flood in. Um, but it took a while and, and a bit of really choosing to be with myself and go asking the questions beyond just the one emotion that came up that felt uncomfortable or felt like a release even. And said, so, mm, but what else is under here? What else am I, do I want to give voice to? What else has a wisdom that it wants to, and what needs attention from me right now? And just almost insisting very compassionately and what else and what else and what else and that came through it was so strong yeah i love that because that unknown place is it is such a gift you know looking into that void um is uh is very powerful because that brings back our our core faith you know, our yes. core faith, that's got to be the, the key to, um, to all, um, especially way showing during this time, because the, the, the people uh, around us are experiencing the unknown. They have, I mean, I've, I've definitely launched myself into the unknown many times mm -hmm. uh, in, in this journey in order, and I was always told, this is training, this is training, this is training, so you can be more resilient later and not be afraid of um, 
you know, lo lose the house, lose the money, all these things like over and over again. I was actually thinking about uh, writing up the, the many times um, that I've been told, let go of everything, give it all away, all of that. And going into that going, oh my gosh, I don't know what's on the other side of this. Like really? And that trust in myself, the right to be here, <laughs> the right to be in a body and go through this and my faith in source itself, not just my team or the brotherhood or anything like that. Yes, I trust them. But when we get into areas like this, you know, it's, it, it's not about they told me this, therefore you do it. There's, there's like a, a level of trust that's been established there, but the trust within myself, yeah. the trust of source itself and the faith that this is the thing. And, and that's the thing, like in the, in the beginning of any ascension process, you make a choice, right? I'm going to choose that a, ascension in this lifetime is the thing. This is the incarnation. I'm going to do it, right? And you end up giving everything away and just, you know, d just destroying all, all of the old and getting into the new. However, this level of it kind of um, shows how, w what that faith was standing on, first of all. Is it a real heart thing? Because if it's not a real heart thing, everything will crumble. Your ascension path will crumble if it's not built on unconditional love for yourself, for everything, honoring source and all of its creations, no matter what it looks like, right? Yeah. And that's the thing that I have been continually reinforcing and, and visiting when things get too strange, a little, I mean, just, just bizarre, just like, again, you know, in entire days or, or I had, I had a whole week of, of just very few hours in the day where, where I could even move, let alone mm -hmm. concentrate on creating something new. And, you know, a lot of people are like, where's your, this, you should be, you should, I'm like, wow. there are no yeah. should. at this point, it's not a should, it's a could. <laughs> right. Should I do it <laughs> today? Oh, that's funny. Yeah. And, and that's that's just where I am. And I would just be yeah. very honest. But it, but again, coming back to um, for for me, it's that time in the evening, spending um, so much time in uh, meditation and prayer and gratitude, and really just going deeper and deeper, deeper into opening up as a pure conduit of source. That's the thing. That's my choice. At this point in my journey, I don't care mm. or carry if it's the wrong choice yeah. to just be that foolish in love with God. <laughs> I'm just like, whatever. That's the biggest thing that I have found. That's the truest thing that I have found. And that's been the foundation of everything is the, the quest to, to feel the reconnection with source and everything that I'm going through and everything that I'm, I'm receiving for, Hey, all the focus this year is going to be on this creator state of consciousness, which, Oh my gosh, is a book I wrote in 2004. Right. I'm like, Oh my gosh, it's all like, you know, everything's coming together. And I'm like, that's beautiful. How, how is anything going to be created in this state of consciousness? You got to let, let that go. Yeah. Let it go. And it's much easier right now because everyone's in the same boat, big collective mm -hmm. boat right now, kind of like what's going to happen. And then there's, there's a lot of assumptions about what's going to happen, or we were told it was going to happen this way. Therefore uh, it, it has to unfold that way. So much is being completely dismantled, including a lot of our, Hey, way showers, ascension folks, a lot of our collective thought forms. Yeah. Off the higher timeline is getting dismantled as well. Yeah. Well, Sandra, this morning also, as I was in this process and then I was actually driving and I had time to settle into another energy. And then I got into an anger and the sadness. It's, I felt this wave coming through me and an anxiousness of to do and these other things. And none of it was overwhelming, but it felt overwhelming to my body is unreasonably 
overwhelming. It's like, okay. And then I was in this space and I got into first anger and then almost immediately a sadness that I've been playing the game, that I've somehow sold out, that I've created my life based on the structures of the system that I'm talking about dismantling in the process and how I'm letting all that go and how I, I just can't do it anymore. And it's, I'm with you on the ascensionary and, and the surrendering and being with source and that love, but there's still those, yeah. there was parts of me that were holding on to a lifestyle and a persona and a way of being and an identity um, that I was still latched onto that emotionally I'm giving myself the space to say, hold on a second, this doesn't really work for me anymore. This isn't in my integrity. This isn't in my sovereignty. And the mourning of that, that I felt this morning, feels like a huge, huge transition that's waiting to birth another um, version of being that's, that's, again, that's just coming alive in me. Yeah, and that's something that that I myself too uh, have been taking a look at because, especially just in the last couple of years, brother, it's been like, how much longer do we do this? You know, kind of sensation, and that for me is um, because there is the the repetition of um, uh, the the new wave of students and the new because I'm a, I'm a teacher, I teach online. So I'm just like, oh, here's that new wave of students and they're starting that conversation from square one. And there's, there's that level of teaching. And thank goodness, a lot of my stuff is, is um, you know, pre-recorded, you know, the online classes. I'm like, thank goodness, because people are coming in at that level. And I, I'm kind of like, wow, if I have that beginner ascension conversation one more time, I, I, my mind will break. Right. It's, yeah. it's just because I'm experiencing so many other things that I need to integrate, you know, and that's the thing for me that um, that put that I feel that I feel that brother It's just kind of like, oh, my gosh, like I, I go to my website. And I'm like, Who is Sandra Walter, you know, kind of thing. And I know we had that conversation a couple of years mm -hmm. ago. So we've been watching the identify uh, the identi identity go away. There's still but but I have to kind of immediately recognize that not everyone is is in the same place that those um that, that that some people still still need that you know they're just like who are you and what do you do and what can you do for me kind of thing I'm like okay but i also understand like i received a message last year at some point this year full stop a complete stop they kept saying over and over again the higher levels were like you're going to come to a full stop, a full stop. And I kept feeling it. And even you know, planning events and everything at the beginning of the year, we were talking about this earlier. And you're just like, this doesn't feel like it's going to uh -huh. happen. Yeah. But, but like everything, okay, all right, just keep answering the emails. Just keep writing the articles. Just keep sharing what's, what's going on and everything. It serves, it serves, it serves, it serves. And then there's this other thing going, if I do that one more time, or yeah. I will, I will lose it, you know, kind of thing. And that's the thing that because the body, literally, DNA levels, different strands of DNA turning on, that that no longer um, can can handle the the resonation, the frequency of doing the same thing over and over again, even if it doesn't exactly match who you are now. That is that's the thing that's causing the the discord. And yes, we can deal with it emotionally, going. Oh my gosh, you know, you have the, the breakdown and the clearing and the, I don't even know what I'm going to be next because when you take a look at it, it's just like a light body, amazing, you know, just like, okay, there's that. How does that translate into uh, these, these lower realms when you're, um, when you're attempting to be a way shower? And that's something that we've been talking about for a long time. So definitely there's tools there but the anxiety that it creates in the body is quite real. And I, I, you know, I always take a moment, examine the feeling. How am I really feeling right now? Well, I'm really a, a bit um, feeling a bit off because I, I don't want to answer 100 emails today. 
I just don't want to do it. Uh But I'm a kind person and I'm a way shower and people deserve my attention and people deserve my presence. And I can send a lot more energy through this many words than I can with this many words. So let's just, you know, for the next hour, just sit down, boom, 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 you know, and do it and everything and go body vehicle. You're just going to have to sit and do this right now. We're still showing up for people in that way. And then, you know, and then it's two hours in the garden or whatever, you know, just like, all right, all right, all right, all right. Because I do understand that it is different levels of consciousness that we're integrating. So of course it's going to feel just like in the beginning of awakening, your old self felt so distant, so out of sync with the, with the truth that was coming in and it was so uh, uncomfortable. And then you spend all this time aligning with your higher self and your higher purpose. And you're this beautiful way shower and you create all these things and it's beautiful and it's beautiful. And then all of a sudden, you know, source says, I'm going to come to a full stop this year in order to reset everything. And you're like, oh my gosh. You know, so we feel that in our fields. We feel that it's, the, it's coming. You're just like, oh, there's that point on this timeline, this highest trajectory, when it just goes, when, when the field has to collapse in order to reset, happening globally too. So it is what it is. No weird predictions involved in that. I'm just, I'm just sharing that that's, that's there. It's, it's mm. there. It's riding in our fields right now. And that's um, what, what I like to do too is, and one, one of these questions um, for embodiers was, uh, what do I need that only I can provide for myself right now? Making it very personal, going, okay, there's, there's this, you know, manifested a, a space for the rest of the year. Amazing, never happens, must be purposeful. I'm like, okay, I never get to sit still. So I'm like, all right. So obviously very purposeful. And, and sometimes I, I just, you know, beam gratitude. I just sit here and go, oh my gosh, I'm inside, you know, I'm in a space that's beautiful and everything. And what, what can I do for myself right now so that I can show up for others, continue to show up for others and, and really not, um, again, the non-judgment thing, non-judgment of anything that's been created, no matter whether it was created by me or somebody else or whatever, whatever's in the highest service will last things that don't crumble. You know, my uh, classes and everything have just been like taking off because because of the awakening. I'm like, okay, thank goodness. Thank you. Uh Thank you for the highest service, you know? And, and for, for me, maybe I, you know, you take a look at it. Maybe I need to bring in assistance to handle that or train people to do what I used to do. Right. Right. So that I can go over here you know, kind of embrace the higher thing. But there is, there is that, that bold unknown that's in our field right now that does demand of the body and the DNA and everything to just stop. Well, there's a couple of things that's exciting about the bold unknown. And, and first of all, for any of y'all who don't know what to do for yourselves, just something really quick to get it going and to just be in gratitude do this for five minutes thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you as your mantra for five minutes and that will just amplify your life but sandra in this unknown also what a beautiful canvas to think big to like really bring in yeah. the, what would seem so grand and not from a projection but from an emotional that feeling tone that we're dropping into presence with Exactly. And that's been, you know, our little new earth now ex- experiments or, or the unity meditations that we're doing every Sunday, you start to realize like, wow, this spiritual practice just, I mean, we were told it's going to build a spiritual power. It's going to build a, a field uh, with, with all of you so that it's a little easier to get into unity consciousness because unity consciousness scares a lot of people. Mm-hmm. They're like, do I have to open my door? Do I have to open my heart? When push comes to shove, what am I going to do? You're getting a taste of how you behave in the unknown, in that, in the higher, you know, with the higher light coming in, 
No, we're getting a taste. How do you behave? Do you hide? Do you integrate? Do you create? Do you honor what, what you're feeling? The gratitude is the highest tool next to faith itself um, that, that you, can, you can do. I am so like, uh, I, again, you know, you spend hours in, in open-eyed gratitude for just sitting here for anything that's beautiful, anything that's a higher vibration. I had purple irises in the back that were going crazy over the last couple of weeks. And I was like, this is all I want to do in this now moment mm-hmm. is sit here and, and blend with these flowers and the energy that's coming through them and their, and their purpose you know, being there for me right now. And I would do that. And it's just gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And it just opens your fields. And then of course, the higher light takes over. And that's, you know, this is a scary thing for some people, like letting the higher self that's embodiment, letting the higher self take over the journey and steer the journey. We've had a lot of practice. This year is the thing, right? We're getting a taste of like, you do you let creator steer take your hands off the wheel you know yeah. you're like well okay how about this this <laughs> <laughs> that's so perfect absolutely yeah everybody it's just still got a pinky on the wheel you know you're like <laughs> you know and that's that's the the place again the full stop of the old reality for the higher reality to just go open that was my meditation yesterday also, Sandra. It's, it's as I was asking Source about this energy, this, this combobulated feelings that were coming up through me, it's, I, Source spoke right back. It's like, where have you lost faith? Yeah. Come back to me. Yeah. Come back to me. Come back to me for a second and tell me if you still feel those feelings that are of mm-hmm. discontent. Oh, and I couldn't. I couldn't. Every time I tapped into... What I knew was true, that love, that benevolence, mm-hmm. the, the other energy couldn't run. It couldn't sustain in that field. Right, because ultimately there is nothing right. but love. There is nothing but source, unconditional. Everything else is just what we've created, you know, distortions and illusions and all of that. It doesn't mean they don't have weight or purpose. It just means that when we we get back on our true north and point it toward unconditional love and, and reconnection to source, not as an out, uh, this is very palpable, not as an outside beingness, but as what, what we truly are, what, what a spark creator source within is so strong. And it's just, it doesn't feel like divine mother. It doesn't feel like divine father. It doesn't feel like paradise sons of God. It feels like all of this simultaneously. And that's the thing I'm like, thank you because that really started stepping up for me last year and i would just weep and weep and weep at the return of the christ that was happening within my heart and and now thank goodness um i have that experience anchored because it does it doesn't it's it's not that it discounts the other realities or the other creations it's not like that at all it really kind of honors all of the other creations and all the other judgments that humanity puts around what's good and bad and everything. It is what it is because it's being, you know, all that's being kind of clean slated uh, by this, this anchoring of divine light. And it's, let's just tap into like this last intention is this last question. What have I learned so far? in 2020 this is the year of 2020 right clarity vision and clarity 2020 hindsight as well kind of like oh let me see everything that i've created so far what's in alignment you know i don't really know where this is going but you know what feels right and what feels like "Eh, that's gonna get the axe you know kind of thing um what have i learned so far in 2020 and what would i love to experience with the upcoming collective embodiment activations that are getting amplified right now. Because embodiment, the higher self is in a completely different state of consciousness. That's the unknown thing that a lot of people feel like, I don't really comprehend 
um, what it's like to be in that state always, forever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go away and that other thing's going to take over. And it's me. And it's yeah. God. You know, uh, we just haven't known ourselves in that state. So for, for, for me, I, I do spend a, a lot of time not just not just with the organic stargates because that's just part of that's just part of the the other work um, that I do is there's a brand new organic stargate system and all these energy flows are coming in and they're just that's why the dismantling is happening right now because that all this stuff opened up so if you're working with that yeah there's there's a lot of missions and service work and, and things like that that still present again it's not one thing or the other it's everything it's layered on top of each other simultaneously um, but when I feel into the, the, the things that I know in the core of my beingness, the experience of that light beingness that is my higher self, that pure love that is the Christed state or, or source itself and the trust and the faith that I feel when I connect with, with source just shining right through my heart, that is that is my reality you know that that is the reality i have chosen and that's the reality that i continue to amplify mm. so when i feel into where where is this going i'm not curious about it and i'm not going to um create something that may or may not be in the highest interest of all concern i'm just opening up and going just just show me just show me more and more and more of this higher thing, because I know the more that I can embody in the collective thing that's happening right now, it's just going to take all the lower timelines and lower agendas and everything, and it's just obviously tearing them apart, you know. Oh. And that's while while it's interesting, you know, the the things that are coming to light and things that we've been talking about for decades. We're like, yeah, this is happening. That's happening. It's new for some people. You know, and there's there's collective uh, releases too with the embodiers. You feel like the lower timelines dropping off um, mm -hmm. with the freedom codes that started coming in last July. You start to feel when people are being freed. Uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Um, you you'll feel it. You know, you're going to weep. You're going to cry and cry and cry, not over what happened but that this is the point on the timeline when all that stops. <laughs> I felt that strongly on 4-4, so strong on that day. It was palatable. Yeah, and a couple for, for, for me, um, just because I'm involved with some of that stuff, um, at, you know, beginning of March, mm -hmm. I was just like, oh my God, oh my God, yeah. oh my God. Yeah, just, you know, yeah. especially when it comes to kids, I was just like, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so, and that's, uh, again, you know, that's, that's all the, the purpose of all this freedom stuff was, you know, most distorted stuff goes first. So it is what it is. Um, but the, uh, just the reminder, n not to make your internal or your day-to-day -day reality dependent on external events. You know, but take a look. Is there any waiting game? Like when they tell me this, then, or when this happens, then, you know, taking that out of, um, again, being very sovereign about your creation. Um, because so, so much of this revelation was, um, is, is bringing to light how much of it is, all of it is permission based and, you know, people creating realities and then by a collective, yes, you know, it, it happens. Um, so a, a lot of our, our focus coming up this year is really um, the, the revelation of our skills as creators, our ability to, uh, to, to manifest um, through unity consciousness itself. I feel the training we've been doing with like the weekly um, Sunday unity meditations has been um, has been the perfect training for us moving into uh, learning how to not just telepathically connect, 
but also feel things and heal things collectively. You know, all of a sudden we get synchronized. So it's give, given us a taste of that. Um, it's funny, a lot of people have been uh, approaching me lately about like how come all the leaders of different unity meditations don't all get together at once for one big shazam kind of unity meditation and and uh you know i'll just share so many people have tried you know and and we we do our best uh however it's it's getting so quantum just participate you yeah. know part, participate um with whatever collective meditation you you resonate with just make sure your focus again stays on the love yeah stays on the light that's so wonderful it's again so much just practical but very um integrative questions that you're asking there sandra and again what it emanates and again it's it prompts this deep wisdom and this connection into that benevolence that it's again it's the it's the foundation for that sovereignty uh, that then takes us into that un the, the collaboration in that unity consciousness. It's powerful. Mm -hmm. um, there's a question I want to get to about the body and what's happening in the body. But before we do that, Sandra, I want to make sure that uh, we give people the opportunity to learn about the special offer and to go into um, what they can continue um, communicating and um, being in relationship with you through your awarenesses on this ascension path so everybody if you would um april if you don't mind type in the link for the special offer on the chat box uh you can get to the special offer where you click on the zoom link that page underneath sandra's picture there's a special offer button you can click on that or you can type into your web browser beyond the ordinary show.com forward slash sandra 21 or you can cut and paste the link that april just put in the chat box and it'll take you to that same offer page. And Sandra, if you don't mind guiding us through um, what you're offering there, it'd be wonderful. Sure. Well, a huge part of my, my journey and the things that I share was on uh, crystalline DNA, you know, uh, the, which has been part of the conversation for a while. But last year, something very special happened. And I was downloaded with how to reconnect the strand, what they all, the layers, the fields, if, whatever you want to call them, um, how they were going to affect through this embodiment, um, these different aspects of self, because it's not just different aspects of self, but there were like different layers of consciousness that we were reconnecting and like the DNA is producing your entire physical experience. Like it's literally the instrument for shining your higher self through um, in, into these realms. So the, which is why DNA has been such a focus for so long in the ascension process. But what I wanted to do is create a class, which I did, that was totally focused on DNA because our physical experience is changing and the reconnection of DNA through the embodiment was going to collectively start creating this DNA super radiance where you're going to, you're, you're not just plugged into your own system you're plugging into unity consciousness when you reactivate and rebundle these etheric strands of dna and uh, so i was given what what the dna uh, what the different layers or strands are responsible for how to engage with that how to recognize in your own journey like i started recognizing when l layer strand nine started coming on i was like oh wow that's that thing they told me about. And all of a sudden it was, you just felt like you couldn't create distortion anymore. It was mm. just like, click. I was like, oh yeah, okay. You know, and, and DNA is, uh, is so affected by our, our subconscious and our thoughts and our deeds and our actions and external things. So it was, it digs into creating the, the bio landscape for that to happen because DNA is completely responding to the subconscious until we wake up. And then the higher self is only gonna give us what we, the, the only gonna give us what we can experience, what our mental, emotional, spiritual, physical self can handle in these realms. So it was like, okay, so how do I create the canvas for that to occur? 
uh, what are the things that I have to fine tune, goes through all, all those different things, and then kind of goes next level on the effects of uh, water, what it does to the water in the body, how to reconnect it with the stargate systems, the, these new organic stargate systems, just touching on everything. And it's just, it's very, it's a very full class. <laughs> it's a very uh, um, comprehensive class. It's got really strong decrees that I've shared with everyone at this point. Um, uh, brand new meditations for each and every module. I just really, really uh, created something that was a, a very powerful tool for where we are as we as we go through this embodiment. So if you're into embodiment, you want to make sure that you're talking to and reconnecting your DNA and being aware of why you're feeling the way that you're feeling. You know, what's going to make you feel disoriented? Ah, that's that thing. And this is what it's going to show me. This is how to rebundle it. This is how the new ge geometries that you're going to start seeing. You're going to start experiencing different things in the body. It's all DNA related and your ability to to hold um, multiple strands of awareness at once is the key to to the Christed state, holding you all of your multidimensional uh, awareness through as source in a, in a lower consciousness, in a physicalized consciousness. So that is what that is what that class is about. And I, and I love that class too because the first it's the the first class where all of the the kind of linear tools came together too so it's all like professionally done and just really just beautiful it just really knocked it out of the park when it came to you know just pulling every it looks and feels and it's light and coated and people have such a strong uh such strong activations as they go through it and right out of the box so i'm just well, Sandra, the way that you present it also for me, it, again, it brings in an awareness that also puts us in a place of compassion for ourselves. Because sometimes if we're not doing it right or having certain emotions or going down a path that leads into another rabbit hole, we start judging. We're not doing it right. There's something wrong with us. We're not ascending. It's like there's all these things that come to mind. But to lay out the cause and effect and to have an intelligence awareness of what's really happening brings in a peacefulness a compassion and understanding and a roadmap really it's like this is where it's heading it's not just all for naught or you're not going down this other track that other people are going down where you see them suffering and in ignorance also it's it really lands on something that's constructive it builds more opportunity for the creativity in our own growth process, but again, staying aligned with uh, the sensory path that's leading us into receiving the light that we're ready to hold as our each part of our DNA activates. Yeah, and reconnecting a different kind of power. Yeah. You know, like the power structures, as they dismantle, we're turning, this is happening simultaneously. You know, the embodiers that started experiencing this in 2018, like, oh my gosh, you know, everything's getting rewritten, you know, and, but it's happening simultaneously. So you, f you start feeling the new power that's being reactivated on the planet right through us, power of love, power of unity consciousness, power of source, coming back to these realms right through you. And you realize, okay, Maybe the highest act of service I can do in this now moment is to reconnect this stuff because it's yours. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. It's not Sandra's not going to reconnect your DNA. I'm going to teach you how to do it. It's total empowerment. Yeah. So that that whole empowerment thing, you know, self empowerment. I've always said is one of the most difficult things to teach. However, the the tools are there. It's completely free will. I'm not going to give you the cosmic Shazam, but it's it's such a strong, <laughs> you know, it's it's such a strong um, tool, let's say it's such a strong gate, it's actually a gateway, to that that you can walk through to to reconnect that stuff and and claim it again. It's yours. 
Now oh. that's the thing. It's like, it is your divine right to reconnect that and to use it in the vibration of highest interest of all concerned, you know, again, reactivating all those freedom codes and the resurrection codes and everything that's coming back in are being activated in vessels that know the right way to use that power. Right. You know, we saw that crumble things in many, Atla many in Atlantean realm. Um, and now that, you know, they were just turned off for a while. So now you, you start turning them back on and it's like, you know, kind of like jumpstarting uh, your your own consciousness, and then get, getting into how do you deal with it? What you what are you going to feel? What are you going to do? What do I feel? What do I need? What I, what am I going to do in this now moment to serve this higher thing that's attempting to come back right through me, knowing that it is me, and that I'm getting reacquainted with myself, all yeah. of myself. Yeah. yeah, it's so good. Y'all, you can take advantage of the special offer. Stefana wrote that it was life transformative for her and how it was amazing. Uh, so thank you for writing, Stefana. And, and you get those type of testimonials all the time uh, from the work. And again, I've seen previews of the videos and what's being taught there. It's, it's done so well, uh, really like next level for you, which is already fantastic. So again, it's there for y'all guys. It's typically $333. Um, for listening to Beyond the Ordinary and accessing it through the special offer, it's $222. And we offer a two payment option on it as well. So take advantage of it. So much to gain from it. And again, you can get there. There's the link here in the web or in the chat. You can copy and paste that into your web browser. You can click on the special offer button on the webcast page, or you can go to beyondtheordinaryshow.com forward slash Sandra21. Then it'll take you to that same page. Sandra, I want to ask you about, again, we talk about embodiments and for, since January, I've been hearing slow and steady wins the race, slow and steady wins the race. <laughs> and about this, right, it's like, okay, thank you. And I've been seeing turtles on the island and getting the messages from the turtle also. <laughs> I was like, okay, it's like, I'm going to slow down, I'm gonna pay attention, listen to that wisdom, be present. Presence was a big thing for me as well. And then not too long ago, I, I was taken back to the awareness and we all have, we all know this, but somehow we tend to forget. And this is a big piece of the compassion part for me. That's so important. The self-compassion that as we're going through these shifts, that there's body chemistry that's shifting as well. And we carry chemistry in our body that's used to running a certain way and that that's being programmed. We're reprogramming the neural pathways. And by hitting specific emotions and by being in it, it's going to release the peptides. They're going to allow for the creation of a new neural pathway to create a new way of responding, of being to that. And that's not a simultaneous response. It can happen quickly, depending on how deeply you go into your work and are conscious of the facilitation that it takes to shift the chemistry and to get into the serotonin that creates the new pathways, um, but it's slow and steady and having compassion with that and knowing that our physical bodies are adjusting tremendously also and, they're fi and it's fighting. Our neurochemistry is fighting to maintain a certain way of being because that's what we've created chemically, mm -hmm. neurophysically through our bodies. Yeah, I feel that's why we really have to pay attention moment to moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many of us have just you know, stood in the grocery store staring going i have no idea what my body needs right now yeah. you know oh, yeah. i just like i don't want any of this <laughs> <You know? laughs> or i want all of it yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know, because the body the body does you know it's like adjusting 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 which is which is is beautiful and it is i'm in my mastery commanding that the new chemicals and the new neurons and the new hormones and the new um, structures and substances that my body needs to fully support this reactivation of my divine DNA and the higher state of light body that I'm moving into be released with as much ease and grace as possible. And then I just monitor it. You know, a lot of us, I know 
like in some of my foundational classes, I'm like, you're, it's eventually you're just going to live on light, but don't try to do that, you know, without, um, again, you know, it's step by step by step, the body will change chemically, the hormones change, everything changes because the chakra system changes, like at the old system migrates, uh, I always call it migrating to the new reality, right? Mm-hmm. You're migrating to the new reality. It's not a woo, jump, you know, because yeah. then you, you blow apart, you know, you blow apart the body. And we've seen people in the past too, you know, to 30 years ago, people were like, you know, just giving themselves too many activations and everything. And they either went a little cray cray because again, chemistry didn't keep up with how you needed to process this new light or they, they would just blow their body out with too much light. Uh-huh. So we've learned. And now, of course, we have many substances available to assist us. You know, I've been taking more silica and more minerals and things like that. And of course, we know how to, um, so amazing what's happening with Revelation right now, because the application of light <laughs> as a healing technology, you know, is now starting to be, become a thing that people are poking around with because of what's going on with current circumstances. But again, the, the physicalization of light into water and then using that, that water to, to heal and keep up, um, again, commanding it, learning how to decree and command, okay, body vehicle, knowing that the body is a separate consciousness, going through a transformation as my higher consciousness is steering the boat, right so it's like little by little and if the body gets too stimulated i'm one of those people who feels like they're getting mildly electrocuted a lot of the time because it is an electromagnetic thing that happens um and and the christ light in the past has been you know cosmic christ was christ was like this blue lightning uh coming in and it, it does feel like that it can feel like that a lot of the time but i i know how to parent my body vehicle I know what it needs. I know when to tell it to slow down. Easy does it, you know, and this is, uh, like you said, you know, the turtle thing is beautiful. I remember a couple of years ago, I was in Maui swimming out in the ocean, went snorkeling, you know, and I like to go way out, went way out, hit this beautiful warm patch and came nose to nose with this giant sea turtle. And she's just there with her, her legs flopping down, right? And she's just hanging out you know, on the wave and everything. And I kind of parked myself next to her, just kind of looking over. I'm like, how you doing? I don't touch her or anything. Just let her have her space, you know? And we just hung out there. And I was like, this is it. This is the thing. Just hanging out on the wave, hanging out on the wave, just peaceful, graceful, no worries, no concerns. Just let it be. And remind myself a lot of the times i consciously pull that moment into my consciousness and i'm like i'm just gonna hang out on this wave with mama sea turtle right now this is this is what i need you know this is the thing to integrate uh because the the thing is if you and especially you know embodiment feels like especially right now feels like a bit of a marathon and i was told like 20 years ago hey when you reach toward the end of the marathon there's going to be a lot of distractions Mm-hmm. keep your focus don't take the gatorade don't look at the flags don't stop for the picture keep going yeah <laughs> keep that's going. good advice and it's just like just keep pace just keep pace you know you don't want to trip you don't want to get distracted you don't want to you know it's just like you and your thing if you keep your again your compass focused on the divine love divine light divine will that's the thing and allow uh, and I have been talking to my body a lot I always have but speaking to it as the the vehicle for this consciousness going okay honey we're going to do our best this day how can I support you yeah you know what can we do again maybe I'm not running the three miles right now okay Mm -hmm. you know what what, how about a walk around the block yeah it's it's like a pet we'll go for a walk okay no. It's funny because I've gotten into points also where it's like I want to go running and it's I can feel that I'm forcing myself to do it and I pause and I go, wait, what's the cost if I do this and what's the benefit if I don't? And just by even dropping into that consciousness, it's like, 
oh, that's, I'm going to be depleted afterwards. I'm, this is going to happen. My body's going to require more rest. And what's the benefit if I don't go? Well, you're going to be restored and you can go for a walk instead for a run and do half a mile instead of two miles and breathe in and be present. And so the wisdom drops in very quickly. We only pause and ask the relationship question that we would want somebody to ask to us if they were asking that of us and how we really truly feel if we were to show up for ourselves. Right. And that highest marriage within, you know, just treating your, yourself, you know, you're the queen, you're the king. This is, you know, how would you treat the most precious, the most precious life? Yeah. How, how would you treat that? That's where, that's where you have to go right now because mm. it is. Um, and that doesn't mean hiding. It doesn't, it doesn't mean hiding. It does, you know, we do have to get out and, and, and express ourselves too, because that's definitely part of the equation. I know sunlight and water have been like the, the key things for me because I, I do a lot of Stargate work, which of course is out on, on the land and connecting with Gaia in that way. But the codes coming through the sun and our, perhaps this is something we should talk about. A lot of us have been having this experience since December of the, the solar flashing activity which has been going on and it's being integrated. Full body rewrite. You feel like, oh my goddess, this is the moment. Like you will feel like you're leaving. Uh -huh. And it lasts for 10 minutes, half an hour. Yeah. I don't think you can handle it for more than an hour, but all of a sudden you're like, no, oh. it's not me. <laughs> You'll feel it. You know, the gas, you're just like, oh my gosh, this is it. And it happens when you're out in direct sunlight. You know, you're completely relaxed and all of a sudden you connect with the sun and you can feel it like, because we're, an we're actually anchoring that, that event for the collective, but you're feeling it because again, certain amount of DNA has to be able to handle that frequency. That's the thing. And you'll, you'll feel, if you feel like a completely different state of consciousness is coming in and your whole body is disappearing, mm -hmm. you know, which is probably why we were forewarned by so many sacred texts and everything like you know people used to envision it like oh you're gonna up and float away or something like that because it feels like you're leaving it yeah. does and then again slowly uh, expanding the balloon and then you come back come back come back expanding the field and the experience anchoring the experience because there's a part of our dna that is collective collective divine golden race dna is not john's dna my dna sarah's dna it's collective. There's a collective as aspect to that. So we can feel it trickling in through the gates right now, that experience. And when you have it, or if you want to command it again, lay in the sun, get completely relaxed, connect with the sun through the heart center, call it in and, and, and see what happens. Because again, your DNA, higher self's only going to give you what you're ready for. Yeah. So if you're if you're ready for it, it's um you can feel it. it re rewrites you completely, and then you know the next the next day you're like, I can't believe that happened. I'm still here, you know, kind of thing. It's it's quite incredible. But we're actually anchoring, again, physicalization of what's already occurred in the higher realms. I love it. I'm so in love with this process, John. So <laughs> is, that why, is that why so many of us have been feeling like those strong feelings of dizziness, like we're going to pass out sometimes also yes. just standing, all that? Thank it's all part you. of that. Thank you for saying that. Yes, because, the mag again, the magnetic field is being so altered right now as these new ga gateways align. Ga Gaia is not just emanating an, a new frequency. She's a she actually has to c completely change again. People talk about a pole shift. It's a polarity shift, but it's mm -hmm. all these different multiple nodes of ma magnetic fields are, are flipping right now. I was just present for one in Mono Lake. I was like, oh my gosh. Um, but it, uh, it does, it, it changes your feel. You'll feel it. Like all of a sudden you'll, you'll feel a, a wave come through or, if, or it's like rocky standing on the sea sensation or you get vertigo. It's been happening consistently through the tribe for um since gosh years ago i know mm -hmm. 
but for it to happen so consistently now yeah. when we're in the middle again we're in the middle of a magnetic shift so it's going from a polarized up and down positive negative to a, tr a triangulation a trinitized state of beingness so your whole field is going to change you know that's yeah. that's the thing but again the collective dna activation gives us those collective symptoms people are feeling it yeah so, you know again part of this unknown thing and every time that that happens of course there's uh, witness yourself witness your own reaction because i can't tell you don't be afraid of it because for some people that's their experience but realize you're creating your reaction and your reaction is dependent upon where you are in your journey there's no judgment like, Welcome oh, to the roller coaster, and your reaction is going to be depending on the turn, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly, brother. Oh my God, this is so amazing. Um, Y'all, again, the special, well, we're going to send the replay link out a little bit later. Sandra, would you mind if we put the link to the, the questions that you have on the replay page? Oh, well, that'd be great. Yeah, so we'll put the link on there so y'all can access the list of the questions to ask yourself. To go deeper into it and again i covered a lot of this call and it's such a powerful tool into self-awareness and self-love truly uh, to be able to go that deeply and to recognize yourself in that it's so fantastic um so again we'll send the replay link out a little bit later this evening it'll just take a little bit while for the video to render and i want to ask one more question before we end sandra uh, but also sandra's course and the dna activations again you can get to that special offer by going to beyondtheordinaryshow.com forward slash Sandra 21. You can click on the special offer button on the webcast page where you access this call from, or you can copy and paste the link uh, that April has posted on here um, onto your web browser and that'll take you to the same page as well. So definitely take advantage of that. It's $222, typically $333 and a two payment option offer on that as well. Sandra, I have to ask you, it's, I get, it, and I have to speak from all my personal experience lately because it's what's coming up and it, it winds up being so true for me and, and so guided. Um, I had been isolating intentionally by myself, just called to it really since January and not feeling really social and wanting to be in my energy and noticing this give take type of dynamic and as an empath where I was over giving or any possible way where I was overreaching for other people's energy. And so it's been great to go with that. And I'm sure many of y'all have been experiencing that push pull over giving over compensating uh, dynamic and that's been covered in other calls, but I finally got out truly. It's like I was going for short walks and runs, but I dropped in over this last weekend and really got out onto the earth, onto Gaia and went swimming and dropped in and guidance was, no, take this hike that you've never taken before. Um, and I was in it. It's, Gaia was speaking to me. It's like, connect with me again. I'm ready to connect with you again because we're in another phase. We're amplifying something else. So I'm asking you to connect with me. This is Gaia. Mm -hmm. We're doing something. We're amplifying together and it's good for you it's good for me and it's good for the collective. What's yeah. your awareness about that frequency? I had an experience the day before December solstice where I was, where I was connecting with Gaia and literally hands on the ground, just really digging into her core and feeling her. And, and she's, she's been really clear for the last couple of years, just, just really uh, kind of honoring her way showers, let's say, you know, and especially folks that are out on the land, you know, gatekeepers, grid workers, we work with her a lot, but there was something different. And I was just like, yeah, oh, yeah just show me, just show me. And this overwhelming wave came up and she, she just like blasted this vision of I'm going to reveal this year, my higher self, just as you are. And it was just like, I'm going to reveal, I'm going to reveal. And the, that, that moment just deepened my, I was just weeping. And I've had several moments like that 
where I can oh, I can feel that. Like, I'm just like, oh Gaia, oh mm-hmm. Gaia, because it, again, the the freedom thing to free an entire planetary consciousness from all that she has been through and all that we have created here to partner with her in this journey has been just it's just such an honor but also to feel this really um a, a deepening not not a reconnection but a deepening of the the new earth level that pure crystalline level and when she shared a couple of years ago like Every creation is very different here in these new earth realms. You know, nothing sticks. There's no distortion. Things are created, uncreated with the same ease and grace. There's so much flow. Feel it, sister. Feel it. She was like, just feel it, feel it. And when I felt into that and uh, paired with what I felt last December and the whole revelation, I mean, I, I was just weeping. That's before all this stuff went down. And I was just weeping like, oh my gosh, this is exactly the culmination of all the work we've been doing here but there are there there is a vibration of the deepening of the relationship with her and what we shall create with her as she reveals her crystalline more solar star-like self because the trajectory for her is to become a more star-like beingness so when you feel that happening within yourself knowing that uh this return of the Christ and the golden race and all of that stuff is on track for the higher and higher creations. You start feeling the higher and higher creation partnership that is not like this overblown ta-da thing. It's like such a deep, um, he- completely healed, completely still zero point love, beautiful beauty, 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 beauty. Um, it's, I'm just, I, I, I'm just kind of honored. I'm just so honored to be walking that path with her. I'm really feeling like we're side by side. You know, there's always been a partnership, but she, she it feels like she's kind of escorting uh, many of us into that experience of like, walk with me, walk with me through this revelation. And there feels like there's a deepening of that. Yes, I will walk with you through this this revelation time, and keeping again keeping our focus there because the other stuff is is what it is. So it's again it's all happening simultaneously. It's quite beautiful. It's very beautiful. The second you said partner with Gaia, it's like I willed up. It's like something like I got emotional in that, and then the awareness that Gaia, y'all feel this and Gaia is asking you to partner with her mm-hmm. in a different the, way in a new way there's yeah. reverence and the, the sacred space um, it's and she's asking you so anywhere you've asked yourself who am I Gaia is asking you yeah. Gaia is asking you feel into that and feel how Gaia feels and sees you and invites you in as an equal. Mm-hmm. And that's the and, place to receive that too. This yeah. outside with her. This is the, and I understand a lot of people are, are still sheltering and stuff, but there's, if there's a way for you to get outside um, or just connect with it, a tree, a plant, a flower, anything, um, but the, the more, again, the craving for, for more of that is there. And from a gateway perspective, brand new organic flows have opened up, energies that have never been here. It's, it's a profound. They're profoundly new energies, which is why a lot of people are just getting knocked out by them mm-hmm. you know, or, or feeling the, the shifts or, or feeling the unknown so strongly because our future self is attempting to embody and it's a completely different state of consciousness on the other side of the veil on the other side of the shift (laughs) that we're we're starting to anchor and feel you know it's a, a very palpable sensation of the time collapse you're starting to feel the ascended gaia and the the again the partnership with her of like 
Mm, okay. Look at what we have created. God, magnificent. Magnificent what's coming up. Yes. Y'all, it's y'all keep following Sandra. Get into the special offer. Go onto her website. It's mm -hmm. just it's so resonant and the invitation, the, the reminder and the way showing that's available. It's so beautiful. Sandra, it's ah, I feel so heart content right now in this conversation and what's been shared today. Thank you so much. Oh, you're so very welcome, John. It's always, always wonderful to check in and thank you for, for showing up, even though uh, many of us just feel like, hmm, <laughs> you know, like, well, okay, we're still doing this kind of thing. I know that it assists people. You know, that's, that's, that's always been our highest intention, brother. Mm -hmm. It's just like, what can I provide in this now that honors everyone's journey and my own? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So beautiful. Again, thank you. Namaste to you, sister. Namaste to you and everyone. Bless and to everyone on the call. Namaste to you. you ah, Y'all are amazing. Thank you for sharing your hearts and for being on here and for being the light that you are to help to amplify ours. So again, y'all are beautiful. Thank y'all. Have a fantastic evening. And again, keep shining. <laughs>